Recording. Okay, hello everyone, and welcome to Wisdom Wednesday, Hump Day, it's Wednesday, and today I'm going to talk to you about the innovation vacuum and the power of simplicity, as in simple products. In order to talk about this, I'm going to be talking about Trello and Jira and a handful of other products that are out there. Okay, so vacuum of innovation. This is Trello. Trello is a productivity tool. It is collaborative and it is dead simple. This is Jira. It's also a productivity tool and it is also collaborative and it is full featured and it's really expensive. And it turns out that in 2017, Jira bought Trello for $425 million. Why? Why so much? Well, it turns out that Trello was on track to seriously disrupt Jira, which is pretty crazy because even though Trello at the time only had about $10 million in annual recurring revenue, they were still on this path to disrupt Jira. And why was Trello so disruptive to Jira, this big behemoth? It's because disruptive technologies are typically cheaper, smaller, simpler, and more convenient to use. And that's what attracts users. And it intimidates big products out there like Jira. And why are smaller products more convenient? It's because they're easier and they save a bunch of time. And all the Jiras out there are complex, full-featured solutions, right? So this is what like the Jira pipeline looks like. Jiras out there, they're always building new features to capture new customers. They're throwing UX unicorns at it, genius builders. And then at the end, you get this big pile of product and you have the customer at the end saying, hmm, wait a second here. And the thing is, is that the, the Jira's out there, because they're always building these bigger, more expensive products, it's making the products a lot more complex and they really turn into feature factories. And here's the thing, is that the Jira's out there, because they're chasing new customers and bigger customers who usually have specific needs, all those new features are being used to acquire new customers, and that's good, right? Because like more customers means more revenue. All that revenue is being injected into the product, but it also means that the product is becoming more complex and there's more overhead. The product gets harder to build, it gets harder to ship, it gets harder to maintain. There's lots of bugs in the product. It's harder to market the product and all the different pieces that are there. Legal's having a field day right with trademarks and what they call all the individual features and disclaimers, and then users need to be trained, and then we need to support all those users. And we get this Frankenstein product in the end when you're on this feature factory road, when the product is really just trying to be a unicorn. But the problem is, is that unicorns don't exist, users get tired of the feature factory, and they crave simpler, more convenient products, something that's more approachable, with less features, that's cheaper, Users often just want a horse, not a bunch of other stuff. Users want just a simple tool that does a couple of things that cut and open and not this crazy monstrosity that's going on. And the Jira's out there fail to realize that they're oversatisfying the needs of the original customers as they raced the competition towards higher performance and higher margin markets. They fail to see they're creating a vacuum at lower price points into which competitors employing disruptive technologies can enter. This came from a book, The Innovation's Dilemma, if you've heard of that. And here's what the visual of this actually looks like. As time goes on, you see that Jira is increasing all of their functionality that's there. What users really want is slowly increasing over time. And then you get this, this vacuum of innovation. And this is the danger zone, right? When the feature does more than customers want. And then simpler, more convenient products can come in. And users have this crazy outcry for less clicks and hiding functionality and making things quicker and easier. And then of course Trello comes along and fills that gap. And we see this all the time in products, right? Here's Yahoo, it's a search engine, it's the news, it's the stock ticker, it's the weather, it's whatever Trump is up to. And then Google, you just search. 
WordPress, right? Who thought that publishing a blog was so hard? And then Medium comes along and makes it really easy. Access, ooh. <laughs> All right? Access is pretty complicated, right? You need training in order to use it. And then things like Airtable come out, which most of us can use. They, they took all the parts of Access and made them really approachable. Microsoft Word, <laughs> right? Gets pretty complicated over time. And then you get things like Google Docs that hide a lot of that functionality and make it about composing a document. This is a Salesforce CRM, Customer Relationship Management System, right? Pretty robust, 360 degree view of your customers and everything about them, but it's complicated and it's expensive. And sales guys hate having to go in here and put all their stuff in. And then products like Insightly, that's five bucks a user comes out where you only have a, a handful of tasks that cover most of the functionality. WebEx, who's used WebEx before? It's pretty painful, right? Then there's this product out there called the Pair In. You don't even need to download a plugin. You just go to the URL and boom, your webcam comes on and you're ready to go. Weather apps, this is the, this is the weather bug app. Looks a little complicated. There's ads on the bottom and then you get all these nice, show me the temperature and whether it's raining or not today. This is the vacuum of innovation. And it's not just limited to digital products either, right? This is a, this is a motorcycle. It uses an internal combustion engine and it's got an exhaust and all this complicated stuff. And then you get electric motorcycles, which are on the rise right now. And these are all the things that an electric motorcycle doesn't do, right? There's no clutch, there's no oil system, there's none of this other stuff. It takes all the complexity out. And for this reason, electric motorcycles are becoming more popular. Here's a, a complicated camera, and then we get things like GoPro who come in and fill that vacuum of innovation. Better yet, anyone remember the flip? Um, the flip, you just kind of flip it out and start recording. It has one button, and these are all the things that it doesn't have. There's no screen, there's no wires, there's no menus, it doesn't take pictures, there's not even a viewfinder. All right, so those, those are all examples of this of this vacuum of innovation. You guys all see how this, how this all kind of flows now, how simpler products fill this vacuum. Uh, so what do I mean when I, when I say simple? Um, we all like to throw this world sim simple around, but what does it mean? This is, this is really my definition of it. Things that are simple have less features. They are singular in purpose. They don't require any user training or very little user training, and they're interruption resistant, right? So when you're doing your thing and then you get all sidetracked and come back to it, do you know where you were or do you need to get back into the flow? Simple products are interruption resistant. They work in extremes too. When you have to run to that meeting and print out your, your notes or whatnot, are you scrambling around or is there a simple solution that lets you do that very quickly? Simple products put the user first and they give the users lots of control. And finally, they are built for the mainstream. Now, what do I mean when I say mainstream? For mainstream users, I really mean there are three types of users. The first, of course, is the mainstream. This is most of the users who are out there who have a pretty low toleration for what they expect of their products. Then there are these willing adopters, right? These are the folks who are like mainstreamers, but they tolerate a little bit more, maybe because it's their job and they have to use something like Jira, right? Just to, just to get by. And then there are, of course, the experts, right, who are the very small audience who know every feature in the system. They're usually really loud and vocal. They're the ones asking for feature requests. These are the, those scrum masters who are just like massaging Jira and getting all these crazy reports out of it that no one looks at. Right? But remember that we follow our Pareto principle here, right? We still have our 80-20, and simple products are designed for the mainstream. Okay? There may be a vacuum in a product if you start hearing things like this from users. Hey, make it easier. How do I do such and such a thing? I wish there were less steps. Hide this functionality. I don't need it. It's too hard. I wish that it add this one thing. If you get lots of the, if you get lots of the add this, add this, add this, those are probably those expert users trying to add more functionality to the system and there's probably a simpler solution. Jira, this sucks. <laughs> dot, 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 it's easy, it's easier. Jira, nah, all right? 
So that's the that's the the vacuum of innovation that products like Jira are, are creating, where the Trellos can can come in. But guess what? There's always a vacuum. Okay. This is what Jira looks like today. This is what Trello looks like today. And as time goes on, you see that Trello is is trending up as they add functionality. Well, there's going to be another vacuum that that comes in. So if you're someone who's really interested in product management tools and wants to make a really simple one, remember that you you probably can sell it for four hundred and twenty five million dollars to Trello. To Trello, all right, which is also now Jira now, all right. Um, so th this was kind of interesting. Um, the first time I gave a, a, a talks kind of like this uh, was 2018. This is the screenshot that I took. And then I retook the screenshot of Trello a few days ago, and this is what it looks like. So, so it, it, ignore the stuff that's the, the details of it, but look at the header there, right? I'm just flipping back and forth. But there's a few differences. This is what Trello looks like in 2019. And these are the new features that they've added in just a year. So there's this home button now. There's now Trello is, I guess, reminding me this is the team that I'm on. Where's my mouse? Oh, oh. Uh, this is, the, this is the, the team that I'm on. Thank you, Trello, for reminding me that I'm on the free version and I probably need to upgrade. I can now see the team members that are there on my Trello board. And there's this invite, invite button. All right, so four pieces of functionality just on this one screen in the last year. And then I got this email. Hey, Joe, check it out. Eight new features in Trello. And like me, the product person is like, no, you're killing Trello. You're making it so complicated. I don't want any more features. It's just a to-do list that allows me to drag stuff up and down and side to side. All right, so if this is what Trello looks like in 2019, then in 2022, it's going to look like Jira, right? And that's the example of this vacuum of innovation always being filled. There's always going to be this vacuum of innovation here. So that being said, this is kind of the call to action. How might we fill this vacuum of innovation? So that said, in conclusion, if you'd like to learn more about this Trello Jira thing, there's a wonderful article about it by Dmitry Tarasowski. If you're interested more in what simple products are, here are some wonderful books that are good, quick reads. Thanks for listening, and I can take any questions that you have.